you have a north and a south pole of every magnet. North and a south pole of every magnet. We have the law of poles, which is that like poles repel, and unlike poles attract. Just like the law of charge. Uh, let's see. Has there ever been a monopole found, class? No. no. Does that mean that one does not exist? No. No. You will find it. I look forward to it. It will be great. It will be, I'm convinced that it will be the same thing as a room temperature superconductor. They're both the same thing somewhere. <laughs> Today's desktop picture is a picture of, I cannot believe that until this Christmas, I had neglected my children. I had never played spoons with my children. They, I, can't, I don't know what happened. But who's played spoons? Played knives. <laughs> I, I grew up with uh, three brothers, so I played a lot of spoons. We actually have a table at uh, my mom's house that has spoon scars across the table from the various games. It was, it was very interesting how uh, the, the old emotions came back that I was playing. It was very difficult to let my children win, for example. Um, but I did. I won the first one, then I just lost from that. Out. But anyway. One thing to make sure that you understand about the Earth is that when you have a compass, the compass needle, the north needle of the compass, points north. And this is a bit confusion, confusing because <laughs> like poles repel. And it should not point toward the north pole because it doesn't. It points toward the south magnetic pole, but it also points toward the geographic north pole. So, the geographic north pole corresponds pretty well with the uh, magnetic south pole, and the reverse is also true, that the south geographic pole corresponds pretty well to the north magnetic pole. Uh, just make sure you understand that about our own planet. Let's see. Um, so we have something called a magnetic field, which is the symbol we use for a magnetic field is a B field. So the symbol is a B, which stands for magnetic. When we look at magnetic fields, just a basic magnetic field, it's going to look like this. Tim. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, the magnetic poles move, right? True. Okay. So how is that like accurate for compasses? Ah, good question. Okay. So we have in the planet a molten core of metal that's spinning. Right? And to, our, to the best of our knowledge, this is what causes the magnetic field of the planet. So as you can imagine, if you have molten metal that's spinning, it's not going to be consistent. Right? So the magnetic field is not exactly the same. So the location of magnetic north and magnetic south, for example, move around a little bit. But, I mean, sure, they move 50 miles this way one day and 50 miles the other way, and they kind of keep this area that's like, you know, maybe 50 miles, and, but that's still pretty close to same location if you think about the size of the planet. So it's not exactly the same location. Plus, what's another fun fact about the pole, magnetic poles of the planet? They switch. They, they switch. We have fossils that uh, all line up for centuries and then a couple centuries later they all have switched and they're lined up for the other direction. The magnetic poles of the planet flip approximately every 300,000 years. How long, anybody know, since the last time it happened? Approximately 800,000 years. Yeah, so statistically, we are due for a change, a flip of the magnetic poles. That'll be fun when it happens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, the digital ones are actually based off of, I mean, you have a magnetic field. Anyway, okay, so here we go. We're back to our north and south poles. We have our various compasses. You can see the direction of the magnetic field. One thing to understand here is that these are very similar to the electric fields that you are familiar with of positive and negative charge. So note the shape here is very similar to the shape we have here. We will go through and highlight some differences, but the, what I want you to start out by realizing is that the overall shapes are very similar. So we have here, we just have a bar magnet with a bunch of iron filings to show the magnetic field, which you could, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, yeah, magnetic field. 
uh, which you can see right here, which is going to be the same pretty much if we have a north and a south pole of two <coughs> different magnets. Right? You can see that the shape is pretty much the same. And then, of course, you could have two like poles, which is going to create a magnetic field which looks like that, which again is going to be similar to the electric field you would have if you have two like charges. So, a magnetic field is defined by the fact that a moving charge in an electric field can experience a magnetic force. So, V field is defined Some sad news for you. This is my last black marker. A magnetic field is defined by the fact that a moving charge in a magnetic field can experience a magnetic force. F. So, so, a moving charge in a magnetic field can experience a magnetic force. The equation for that is the magnetic force equals QV cross V, where velocity and the magnetic field are the two vectors. So once again, we have the cross product. Just like torque, we have the cross product. So this works out to be equal to QVB sine theta if you are um, not looking at the direction, which we'll talk about in a little bit, exactly how to figure out the direction of the magnetic, the magnetic force. So this one right here just gives you the magnitude of the magnetic force. This one right here with the cross product will actually give you the direction. For a moment, let's solve this to get the dimension. So B is going to be equal to the magnetic force divided by charge times velocity times the sine of theta. Uh, dimensions for me, please, Mr. P. Dimensions for force uh, divided by charge Coulombs. times uh, velocity Meters per second. multiplied by what you get when you take the sine of an angle. Nothing. Nothing. We're going to move this over a little bit, Mr. P. So we're going to have coulombs per second instead of uh, meters per second. What is a coulomb per second? Thank you. Jenkins. Amp. An amp newtons per amp meter, which we call a Tesla. Capital T for Tesla. You should be aware, every once in a while, you're going to see uh, it in Gauss's. One Tesla is equal to 10,000 Gauss. I don't know why we have those two, but we do. Um, capital G. Uh, let's see. What handy tool do we always have with us to figure out the direction of the magnetic force? The right hand. So we can use our right hand with the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the magnetic force. Remind me, two major impediments to student being, students being able to use the right hand rule. Sarah Jane Jones, give me one. You're too cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Second one, you are sometimes too cool for the right hand rule. First one? Can't find your right hand. Can't find your right hand. Hold up your right hand. <laughs> Limber up. <laughs> oh. Got to be limber in order to do the right hand rule. Okay. So, the right hand rule looks like this. <laughs> I'm not going to start out by writing down that we use our right hand. <clears throat> Hopefully you can figure that one out. Your fingers point with the velocity. Your fingers then curl with the direction of the magnetic field. Now, I'm going to put down approximately 90 degrees, although that was more um, 
more applicable in college prep physics. There are more instances where we don't do approximately 90 degrees in this class, but it's a good uh, rule of thumb. That's funny. To uh, <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb. Just kind of begin there, and then the last one is your thumb points with the magnetic force for a positive charge. If you have a negative charge, then it's 180 degrees from the direction of your thumb. All right, let's go through some examples, just some basic ones here. Let's have a positive charge, which has a velocity to the right, and the magnetic field is constant and up. Right. Point figures in the direction of velocity. Coil figures in the direction of magnetic field. The, the thumb points out of, out of the board. The symbol for out of the board is what? Nick? Ah, not what? X. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess arrowheads. Sure. <laughs> How do I draw an arrowhead? It's a dot. Okay, sure. Okay, so you're extended. Here we go. So this is how we do out of the board. So these dots mean out of the board. And Nick's remembering how I remember that, which is that we have the little tips of the arrowheads which are coming toward you for out of the board. We also have into the board, which are going to be X's, which would be what, Nick? The arrow feathers. The feathers of the arrow. Why don't I like this? Right, because a feather only has three feathers, but it's another. It's a, it's a good way to remember. All right, let's do some more. We have, let's say, we know the magnetic field is oriented as such, and we have a positive charge which has a velocity which is in that direction. Please get out your right hand, walk your way through it, <laughs> so like awkward. Some oh, tips, sorry. some tips, okay? One, this is never good, okay? You want to try to keep your hands straight. Another thing that you want to try to avoid is something like this. <laughs> okay. You, you, if you find yourself doing this or something that looks like this, move your body. Don't be too cool. The right hand rule. Realize you may need to move the hips. I do understand that you only want to sit like this. There is, you just want to like do this. You can turn. Oh, look at this. Look at me. Ooh, I can turn in my seat. Okay. So realize that you can do that. If we take the velocity, we point our fingers down. The magnetic field is into the or out of the board. So we have to do that. I got it right. I got it right. Okay, so <laughs> relax, just testing you all. So the velocity is down, we curl our fingers with the magnetic field, the thumb points to your right. <laughs> so we get the magnetic force is then going to be to the right. We'll do some more. Here we have the, a positive charge with a velocity to the left and a magnetic force which is upward. In this particular case, we are looking for the direction of the magnetic field. Do you have a question? It's yeah. hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Let, let me get the answer first, then let's get your questions. Okay. It's to the last one? Yeah. Oh, but we're in the middle of this one now. We'll come back to that one. We'll come back. Uh, Winter, walk me through it. Okay, now an interesting thing to point about this magnetic field, which I'm going to draw here, I agree, hopefully I figured out how to do that, is like this. Notice that this magnetic field, because we've got QVB sine theta, could be anywhere between 
0.1 degrees and 179.9 degrees in this direction, right? So the magnetic field, sure, if we had it going this way, we would get the maximum force, but it's entirely possible that the magnetic field could be this direction or could be this direction, right? It could be any one of the directions as long as it is somehow pointed out of the board here. Go ahead. I uh, figured out now. Good. Let's see? Let's go. All right. Uh, let's do another one. We have a positive charge with a velocity which is down and a magnetic field which is in constant and in that direction. Remember, this is bad, bad, bad. Turn your body. Velocity, down, right? We curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So I have to curl my fingers this way in order to get there, right? And I'm only curling, you know, looks like 30 degrees or something like that. My thumb then points into the board. So this magnetic force would be into the board like that. Okay, now we have a negative charge and a magnetic field which looks like this. A constant magnetic field which is out of the board. And we need a direction on the velocity. Doesn't need to move. <laughs> <laughs> or else there would be no force. Don't you do that. I saw that too. <laughs> Velocity. Magnetic field. What then class is the direction of the force? Uh, up. Why up class? Negative charge. Negative charge. Uh, let's do two more. We're going to have a negative charge that has a velocity in this direction and a magnetic field that is in this direction. We're looking for the direction of the magnetic field. point our fingers in the direction of the velocity, and curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Class, the force is out of the board, again, because it is a negative charge. All right, negative charge, velocity that is up in the magnetic field, that is down. Direction of the magnetic force. Nitish, what is the direction of the magnetic force? It's zero. It does not have a direction. How do you get that the magnetic force is zero? It's, it's two V B sine theta, and the angle is 180. The sine of theta equals zero when we have an angle of 180 degrees or zero degrees. So you've got to be careful to understand that when the velocity is either in the same direction or opposite the direction of the magnetic field, then you end up with no magnetic force. Comes back to the word can. A moving charge in a magnetic field can experience a magnetic force. However, it doesn't have to. It could have um, no force if the angle is zero or 180 degrees. 